Well, we're just one day away, or should I say, close to the day, uh, for the release of Lightyear. But now, I'm about to begin a re-review of Toy Story 3, right now. Big Digs Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So, greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a re-review of the 2010 computer animated dramedy sequel, Toy Story 3, released by Disney and produced by Pixar. The third installment of the Toy Story franchise, released 11 years after the previous film. <clears throat> The film was directed by Lee Unkridge, who was the editor of the first two films and the co-director of the previous film. Written by Michael Arndt, while Unkridge wrote the story along with John Lasseter, the director of the first two films, and Andrew Stanton, the co-writer of the first two films. <coughs> the film was released in June of 2010. In this time... Well, a now teenage Andy is leaving for college, and Woody, Buzz, and the other toys are accidentally donated to a daycare center by Andy's mother. They must decide where their loyalties lie. This would feature the same voice acting cast as before, which included Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, Joan Cusack, Don Rickles, Wallace Shawn, John Ratzenberger, Estelle Harris, Jeff Pigeon, Joey Benson, John Morris, Laurie Metcalf, and Arlie Ermey in his final voice role before his death on April 2018. Now, of course, even though <clears throat> we got a new voiceover for Slinky Dog, who was, who was voiced by Blake Clark. Yes, after the death of Jim Varney. Now, of course, he's done numerous movies. Most notably, he's appeared in some of Adam Sandler's movies, as a matter of fact. So, now I see, yeah. He does a pretty good job, but I'm getting too ahead. Far ahead of myself. This is the second Pixar film and third overall film after Beauty and the Beast and Up, as well as the third film produced by Walt Disney Pictures to receive an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. Now, before I go into this, if you haven't seen my re reviews for the first two films, click on that card and you can catch what you might have missed or see them again if you wish. <coughs> Give you a few additional seconds. Okay, that ought to do it. Now, on with the story. Andy is 17 years old and preparing to leave for college. He has not played with his toys for years, and most have gone except for Woody, Buzz Lightyear, Jesse, Bullseye, Rex, Slinky, Ham, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, the Aliens, and three toy soldiers. As the despondent toys reflect on their future, the soldiers parachute out the window and leave. Andy intends to take Woody to college and puts the other toys into a trash bag to be placed in the attic. However, Andy's mother mistakenly puts the bag outside with the true garbage. The toys narrowly escape from the garbage truck and believing Andy deliberately threw them away, get into a donation box in Andy's mother's car with Molly's old Barbie doll. Woody falls, but is unable to convince the others of Andy's real intentions, and goes along when Andy's mother takes the box of donations to Sunnyside Daycare. <coughs> At Sunnyside, Andy's toys are welcomed by the other toys, led by Lotso Hugging Bear, or, or Lotso for short. The toys, except for Woody, are delighted to learn that Sunnyside never runs out of children, and Barbie is enamored with a Ken doll, of course. 
Willie attempts to return home, but is instead found by a child from Sunnyside named Bonnie, who brings him home and plays with him and her other toys. Bonnie's toys are shocked that Woody escaped from Sunnyside. Chuckles, a toy clown, explains that he, Lotso, and Big Baby were owned by a girl named Daisy, but were lost during a family trip. When they made it home, Lotso found out that he had been replaced. Disregarding Chuckles' protest, the embittered Lotso lied to Big Baby that Daisy had replaced all of them. They rode a truck to Sunnyside where Lotso took over turning it into a toy prison. Chuckles was eventually broken and later found by Bonnie. After Andy's toys are subjected to a very rough playtime with the toddlers, Buzz asks Lotso to move the toys to the older children's room. Lotso allows Buzz to go, but when Buzz insists that Andy's toys go as well, Lotso decides to switch Buzz to demo mode. This resets Buzz to his original factory settings, causing him to believe he's a real space ranger under Lotso's command. Meanwhile, Mrs. Potato Head, doing an eye she lost in Andy's room, sees Andy searching for his toys. They realize that Woody was telling the truth about Andy's intentions and try to escape, but Lotso's henchmen, now assisted by the brainwashed Buzz, imprison him. Woody returns to Sunnyside, where a chatter telephone, yes, I actually used to have one of those when I was a little boy, tells him that there is no no, no, excuse me. There is now only one way out. The trash. Later at night, the toys make their escape plan. After successfully stealing the master key and disabling Lotso's night watchman, they attempt to restore Buzz, but Rex accidentally resets Buzz to Spanish mode. Spanish Buzz immediately allies himself with Woody and falls in love with Jesse. The toys reach a dumpster but are cornered by Lotso's gang. Woody reveals Lotso's deception to Big Baby, who angrily throws Lotso into the dumpster. As a garbage truck approaches, the toys try to leave, but Lotso pulls Woody into the dumpster. And the rest of Andy's toys jump after him just as the truck ar arrives and they all fall inside. <coughs> Now for the ending. As always, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Buzz returns to normal after a television falls onto him inside the truck. The truck takes the toys to a landfill where they are swept onto a conveyor belt that leads to an incinerator. The aliens spot an in industrial claw, but are swept away while running toward it. After narrowly avoiding a shredder while trying to escape Lotso, well, rescue him, Woody and Buzz help Lotso reach an emergency stop by only for Lotso to abandon them. The toys fall into the incinerator and resign themselves to their apparent fate. But the aliens, having made their way to the industrial claw, suddenly rescue them. Lotso is later found by a garbage truck driver who fastens him to his truck's radiator grill, along with a few other toys. Woody and his friends ride another garbage truck back to Andy's house. Woody leaves a note for Andy, who, thinking the note is from his mother, donates the toys to Bonnie. Andy introduces the toys individually to Bonnie, and is surprised to find Woody at the bottom of the donation box. Bonnie recognizes him, and though initially hesitant, Andy passes Woody on to her. And they play together before he leaves. Woody and the other toys wit witness Andy's departure as they begin their new lives with Bonnie. And that's the end, but in the film's epilogue, Barbie, Ken, and Big Baby have vastly improved Sunny's side and maintain contact with Bonnie's toys through letters. The toy soldiers parachute to Sunny's side where Ken and Barbie welcome them. End of story, my friends. Yep. <clears throat> Pretty good ending, actually. <laughs> So what did I think of Toy Story 3? Well, I'm going to say it's still pretty good, actually. I don't really consider it to be 
my favorite since I do like the first two a whole lot. Still, nevertheless, the film did very well. And it may not have the 100% its two predecessors did, got. It's at 98%. But it still blends in the humor we got and some of the emotion, kind of like what we saw in the previous film. Anyway, the film did very well. And it went on to make over a billion worldwide. Uh, yes. The critics agree, well, loved everything. The vocal performances, screenplay, emotional depth, the animation, and the score, once again, done by Randy Newman. Yes, I agree. Everybody was really good. Now, aside from our usual voice actors, of course, we have Tom Hanks as Woody, Tim Allen as Buzz, Joan Cusack as Jesse, John Morris as Andy, Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head, and I've already mentioned Blake Clark as the Slinky Dog, Wallace Shawn as Rex, John Ratzenberger as Ham, Estelle Harris as Mrs. Potato Head, Jeff Pigeon as the Aliens, Joey Benson as Barbie. Yeah. But of course, we did get some. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. Lori Metcalf as Andy's mother. Other voices included Ned Beatty in the voice doing the in the voice of Lotso. Voicing Ken is Michael Keen, yeah. And let's see, Emily Hahn voices Bonnie. Here's some other characters. We have Mr. Pricklepants, voiced by former James Bond, Timothy Dalton. Jeff Garland, who a lot of you know best from Curb Your Enthusiasm and the Goldbergs fame. Yes, as the voice of the character Buttercup. Bonnie Hunt, who recently lent her voice to Disney and Pixar's Cars a few years back, voices Dolly. Whoopi Goldberg voices Stretch. And we have a host of others. Yes, there's so many, uh, but anyway, I actually really liked the voices and what have you, and I've got to give credit for the score done by Randy Newman. He once again does a great job. <clears throat> and he also performs a brand new song called We Belong Together. There's also a um, Spanish version of You Got a Friend and Me performed by the Gypsy Kings. Incredible, huh? You also get to hear some other songs in what have you. Popular tunes like Gary Wright's Dreamweaver and La Freak by Chic. Plus, you do hear Newman's original version of You Got a Friend and Me from the first film. Yep. Really something. And of course, this would be Newman's sixth film to have he would do the music for. Of course, he done the first two Toy Story flicks, plus A Bug's Life, Monsters Incorporated, and Cars. Which, of course, I have yet to review Cars. I failed to review it last year for its anniversary, but I'll make up for lost time. And A Bug's Life, of course, Pixar's second film. So anyway, this is just so good. I appreciate the, the, the story the score, the cast of voices, everything this had to offer. So in the end, would I recommend Toy Story 3? You better believe it. Yes. I think this would be perfect for the kids to enjoy. And, well, at first we thought this would be a perfect way to end. But, well, nine years later, we got number four, which is what I'll be re-reviewing next time. 
So what, are, so what are your thoughts on Toy Story 3? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And stay tuned, next time I'll be bringing to you my re-review of Toy Story 4. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other films from Disney and Pixar. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Finding Nemo. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Monsters Incorporated. Or go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my my review, which is spoil-free, on the last film they ever released in theaters in the form of Onward. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video, games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.